this is Sean with the uh, Grid 7 Podcast, and I'm here, this is the first episode, I'm here with Bob Britton, uh, the marketer of the year for Infusionsoft in 2010. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Thanks, yeah. thanks, yeah. Sean, it's good to be here. Yeah, cool. So, Bob, uh, tell us about, let's just go back to before you were marketer of the year, what were you doing at that point? Um, I was running an um, uh, auto repair business. Mm -hmm. I've been in the auto repair business for about uh, 15 years or so at that point, and I uh, had been always a student of direct response marketing for 10, 10 of those years. I've really been going to private boot camps, reading books, learning about just core business strategies, direct response marketing, how to really build a, a solid company. So I, I kind of had those pieces you know, around um, in the years leading up to my discovery of Infusionsoft. And uh, I, I'm kind of envious of the people today because uh, you know I had to pay like five or six grand to get the thing and then it was you know uh, they wanted me to pay extra for training and I've always I was kind of lucky because I was one of those people that in the 1980s uh, the computers were just coming on board and I had an old Commodore 64 and I remember my friends are out playing baseball but I was in the basement you know hacking on that computer and I I've kept that love of computers alive my whole life so technology to me became second nature so when I I dove into Infusionsoft I was one of the rare people that Looked at it when, and it made total sense to me, and I was able to use it instantly. Even back in the day, before it was oh, into yeah, it it's not. It doesn't. Have, where's none of this drag and drop stuff that they have yeah. now? I mean, it was like there was you know, sub menus of sub menus to get to things. Yeah. It's nowhere near as, uh, as as it is now. But it, but it's, but somehow somehow that crazy stuff made sense in my head, cool. and I saw the ability to take an idea that I had and then apply it so that it would automatically move forward on its own. I I, I really hate. Uh, to, to have to pay somebody to do a redundant task. Mm -hmm. uh, but marketing actually a lot of times is very redundant. You know, you've got a, a new client come in, you want to treat them a certain way, you've got a repeat client that spent a lot of money with you, you want to treat them a different way. And, and so there's these different kind of points along, the, along the, the, you know, the line, the timeline of a customer. And they call that the, what, the perfect customer life cycle right. inside the FusionSoft space. Um, and so, so I, I knew that and I had some of that going in my business, but um, but be able to automate those all of those processes and have them happen, you know, without any human interaction, really was that's the where, epiphany. That, yeah. That's it, man. I was like, bam! You know, all yeah. of a sudden the results were were there. And so, how long from the time that you first learned about Infusionsoft? You already had the the direct marketing background, Definitely. but the, when you first started Infusionsoft, towards when you actually became marketer of the year? One year. One year. So I got Infusionsoft in 2009, and the following year I was uh, awarded the ultimate marketer. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I took that business. I mean, we went from, we were doing okay. You know, we were doing pretty good, and sales tripled in, you know, not 12 months, you know, maybe about eight months. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all of that money pretty much went right to the bottom line because, mm -hmm. you know, we were paying our bills before we were getting by. But when you exponentially grow your, your yeah. sales, but you don't add staff and you don't add additional overhead, and it's all the only the only additional overhead was two ninety nine a month for this software program, and in my time to set some of these systems up. Right. Bam. You know, that's a good day. What were, if you could attribute those gains, were there was there one particular effort that you would attribute the majority to that, or was it just kind of the confluence of all these things working together? Well, you know what I realized, it really is. What I realized is that people always are looking for the magic bullet. Like, come on, Bob, tell me what the one secret thing that you did. Right. That's not it. You know, it, it, a great marketing plan for a business is really a series of a bunch of things all working together to build that company. Mm -hmm. So I like to think about it in terms of targets. So I have a target of a new customer. I'm going to treat that target differently. A repeat customer it gets treated differently. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a dead or dying customer is a different target. Somebody that hasn't been around in a while, we need to treat them differently. Mm -hmm. you know, somebody that's lost and hasn't been around in maybe a very long time gets treated differently again. So there's these different targets within it. And when you get a system that treats those all and markets to them all correctly, the mm -hmm. lift is is unbelievable. You know? So there, there is no magic bullet. Uh, there's some things that clearly work better than others. Um, but you know, I, I'd say having a really strong web presence and understanding the the integration between the web and your, if you have a bricks and mortar business, really getting those two to kind of work together to help build your company is a very powerful strategy. Okay, so it's interesting. So you, I'm just thinking about it. You had the technical background, the Commodore 64, like the tapes and the, like, oh yeah, 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 the big disk drive, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had the direct marketing background, yep. and then you had a business that was profitable at the time. Yeah, we were doing all right. Yep. Okay, so those are. It sounds like you had all the right mixings. It's like a perfect storm. Perfect storm. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, great. 
So what do you, okay, so fast forward, you got the marketer of the year, how has that changed things? Have, what have you learned since getting that award and how has your thinking changed, if at all? Um, well, it's, it's, it's got me a lot of notoriety um, and, and with that came uh, my, my thinking of, you know, I could help a lot of other people because I, I haven't met a lot of people that have those kind of, those three things all together in one package and mm -hmm. actually have a business, they, they understand technology and then they use technology to build their business. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, geez, you know, I ought to, I ought to really um, help other people with that and see if, if I can help transfer that knowledge and, and see if other people get the lift that I did. And uh, so I started what's called Marketing Automation Group. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a high-end, we call it a high-end mastermind, but really what we do is we get together and we talk about how to use technology and good sound business principles to grow your business. I think the big mistake that a lot of people make is they try to uh, search for the magic bullet or they get caught up in, you know, ooh, this is really cool. And you and I were talking before, like, I've actually had clients that go out and they buy automated webinar software, but they've never actually sold anything on a regular webinar, a live one. Why the hell would you try to automate that? Right. It's like adding, you know, you're going to automate crap, you're going to get more crap. You know, and uh, and that's not how you build a solid business. You have to really have the good strategy, proper strategy, the right, clear thinking, do some testing, and then you can automate the results. Maybe if it makes sense. Um, I think I look at Infusionsoft as, as an extremely powerful tool, but a piece of a much larger puzzle of your business mm -hmm. in terms of your marketing strategy, your product development, um, you know, your customer, your understanding of your customer. Mm -hmm. um, those those things all work together to really build a business to a significant level. What do you say to that person who comes at it? So that they attend an event like this. We're at PartnerCon right now. This is the first inaugural PartnerCon. Um, but let's say this was InfusionCon. Someone comes to this as a customer, potential user of InfusionSoft, and they get so fired up about it, they got to have it, and they just think if you just sprinkle some InfusionSoft on it, it'll, it'll be amazing, right? Yeah. So what do you say to that person to get them to like say, no, 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 let's like step back, let's look at your business. Like how do you? What does that conversation look like? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good question. Um, I think you really have to you have to start out by understanding what are you trying to do. Mm -hmm. All of us get get you know we see the potential. We see oh my god if I did this you know I could be like Bob and I could have all these processes that work automatically and it's going to make my business grow and I'm going to make so much money, and that's true. But you have to really understand what your targets are first, and then there's the technology piece. How are you going to make this all work? How is it all going to plug in? So what I really encourage people to do is say, okay, yeah, get Infusionsoft, because you have to have it. Mm -hmm. this, th let, let's be real. The, the business world has changed forever. And in, in the last, I've been, been in business since, you know, 1990-something. And in that time frame, I, I mean, I've seen massive changes. The, the, the Yellow Pages used to be relevant. They're completely irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. You know, people were searching on the web, you know, regularly. There's, what, billions of searches daily now. Uh, and they're coming from mobile phones, you know. So so all of this technology and all of this is, is it's not slowing down. It's accelerating. But if you're really going to capitalize on that, then you need to have a clear understanding and clear strategy of, okay, I'm going to do this, and the reason why I'm doing that is for this. Oh, and by the way, okay, I'll bring in a few stuff. Hopefully I can automate that piece. Mm -hmm. um, but it, without that clear kind of vision of what we're going to do, I've seen people throw so much money away literally well i'm going to pay ten thousand dollars this guy's going to build me a new website and that website doesn't really have the uh the direct response parts it needs it doesn't it doesn't uh integrate with infusionsoft correctly it doesn't uh it's not thought through all the way to the end of what is the what is the objective here mm -hmm. in terms of what we're going to have our customer do or get or be in order to get the result that we want mm -hmm. you know i mean the, at the end of the day and, and you know this i'm sure better than anyone it's about roi all of this technology and all of this stuff all boils down to, are we making a profit? Yeah. It's not yeah. about the coolness of the thing. Sure. It's about, does this help support the cause that I'm after? And that is, to, in, in that in my bricks and mortar business, is to, does it support auto repair? Does it help people get their cars fixed better, faster, cheaper, more efficiently? Right. That's it. That's, that's, it's more efficient. And sometimes it's, it is more efficient to use technology, and sometimes it's not. Yeah. And so there's there's a, uh, a stra that that's where the higher level thinking I think that you can get up caught up in the excitement and you miss that of hmm doing something just for the sake of doing something is not really a great strategy. No, it, it's very short term. No, and like you said, it's almost like automating or amplifying that. If anything, it's like it's not working, so let's make it not work fast. Faster. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it not work more efficiently. Yeah, more efficiently. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It, it, it sounds crazy, but but. 
you can see how people can get caught up in this. And, and, and I know I have to, I've bought stuff that I never used. Yeah. And luckily I, I've got a filter and I've got a group around of people around me now who, who say, oh, wait, wait a minute, Let, let's back up for a second. Let's look at this. Where are you going with this? Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of shake me a little bit now. Hey, where yeah. are you going with that? What, 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 how does that fit into your overall puzzle of building your company and building your brand and building your, your messaging and your market? Right. And then that, you know, you almost have to go backwards because we are all exposed to all these really cool things that are out there. And there's some really cool stuff out there now. Uh, and I'm sure that it will continue for many years to come, but does it fit with the, the vision that I have and the, and the direction that, that we're going for this, for this business or for my company? Um, that's, that's the real juice. That's the thing that I think a lot of people miss. And that's the thing we spend the most time on when an Infusionsoft user comes in or a, a new user comes into my mastermind group. You know, we kind of have to take a step back and say, okay, where are you at? What are your visions? What are your goals? What are you trying to get to? What are you trying to accomplish with this? Mm -hmm. Because automation, like we said, automation for automation's sake is, is foolish, yeah. you know? So so that's really where we're at with that. I, I, um, I, I'm excited about the direction this company is going. I'm excited about the product. I love what's going on out on the web right now. I mean, the, the opportunity has never been better, ever. And, and I'm, in my opinion, we are still sitting on the very bleeding edge, the very verge of something that's going to be phenomenal in the years to come beyond probably what my, my mind can think pretty big these days. And I, I think it's going to be way beyond that. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty exciting to be kind of mixed up in this, in this, in these times, you know? Yeah. It, it, it kind of reminds me, I think of it like when the introduction of the internet, right? The same kind of, holy crap, like this has some potential to me. It's like the next elevation up from that, you know, it, there really hasn't been something that blew me away like this since the, the advent of the internet. I, and I, I don't know, it sounds like you've seen it. I, feel I, the same way. I feel exactly the same way. We, we're, we, are, we are literally, so it's like version one, oh, version one is kind of over and now it's version two. Yeah. And version two is gonna be even more exciting, more stuff, more connectivity, more abilities. Um, but I, more noise too. More noise, that, you know? yeah. There's, there's so much noise right now and, and I do believe that that's gonna continue and maybe even accelerate, which is why I think it's super important to get, to get clear. Mm -hmm. To get really clear, it, it, you know, simple statements like it's all about the ROI, it's all about profit. It's, you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to make more profits faster and easier. Um, and if you can use a tool like Infusionsoft or uh, many of the other tools and kind of put them all together to do that, that's what we're, that's what we're all about. Sure. You know. Um, do you have any particular methodology, or is it purely just kind of an art form as to? Like decompose someone when you meet someone the first time and and they're all excited about a fusion soft or something else and you decompose that down you say we're gonna look at your business do you have a framework that you use for analyzing their business or is it more I, I well I always go back to well what does the marketplace say that's the very first thing that, that I get anyone that I would talk to is to say well what is your marketplace telling you are you listening to your customers are you listening do you have any customers right. and if you do have them well what are they telling you mm -hmm. um, and I think I actually don't think I don't think a lot of people really get that. It, 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 it's like, I see people, well, they, they have an idea and then they're gonna go sell this idea. But they don't really pay attention to the fact that maybe the marketplace doesn't want it. Or they may want it, but they're not willing to pay for it. Right. And if they're not, if those two, one of those two things happens, you, you can spend a lot of time, money, and effort trying to market something and never get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you can use all these fancy tools and you can be on Facebook and you can have all this stuff and you are going nowhere fast. Yep. Now I've seen the exact opposite happen where, you know, you can come up with an idea and then test that idea in a small way, measure the results, see if you get sales, see if things kind of click the way you think they're going to, and then put the hammer down and whew, that's a horse of a different color. That's the stories that we hear about a guy, you know, the guy went from zero to a million dollars a month yeah. because he did some testing, he did some research, he understood his market really well. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that I, I would probably sit somebody down and say, Let, and I kind of interview them and see how well do they know their market. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been lucky, to, I've been able to really look at a marketplace and, and see a need within it. Mm -hmm. And I know you're, you're we've talked and you're very yeah. good at this too. You can kind of, you get a sense of things when you're talking to people, you get a sense of things and you can go, hmm, I bet if I built that, it would sell. Yeah. Which is very different from, a, from, oh, I have an idea and I think it's going to make some money. Yeah. Without really having the background in the, in the, in the kind of research in that space. You know, when you're in a space for a while, and I, I don't know if you're a fan of Mark Cuban at all, but I, I, love, I love his book. And, I, and one of the things he said in his book recently, 
was that he goes into a new a new space or new venture. He learns everything there is to know about it. He'll spend three hours a day plus reading every periodical, every article, every blog post, every book he can find about that particular subject mm -hmm. until he's an absolute master and understands that space better than anyone. And then he'll go to you know social events and so on and talk to people who are in the space and just make sure that he's still learning. Sanity his, checking. And, exactly. Yeah. It, are the assumptions he's making and then he sees opportunities and, and just kills it. Yeah. Because he already knows, he knows the space. Yep. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, uh, starting a business just for the sake of starting a business is not always the great way to go, so, or the sure. fastest way to riches. Like. If anything, I've learned, uh, so I run the Lean Phoenix, the Lean Startup Circle chapter for Phoenix, and a uh, big fan of like Eric Reeson, Steve Blank, and customer development, and all that stuff. Uh, but that's like probably one of the most powerful lessons that I've learned in my entrepreneurial career is in terms of validating demand. Don't go out and invest all this engineering time and build something that you think you need until you've actually validated that there is a need for it. And like you said, that more people are willing to pay for it. Because they'll always tell you, oh yeah, that sounds awesome. I totally use that. Really? The, the, until, the, the until, until they're test. taking their wallet out. <laughs> until they're going, here you go, Sean, here's, here's $500 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That's the litmus test. That is always the definitive factor. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Well, where do you see things headed? Like, if you were to try to project out, do you see anything swirling that catches your eye that you think is an interesting opportunity or that you can reveal? I mean, I don't <laughs> reveal on camera here. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think honestly, and I, and I mean this 100%, there's so much opportunity right now in this space, in, in the web, web space, in the internet space, mm -hmm. there's, there's way more than, than any one person could possibly capitalize on. Even thousands of people. You know, there's just so much opportunity out there. And, and when you really start getting in here, you start diving into this, and you start to see it all the time. I have a, I have a notebook that I keep with me, and I get ideas constantly yeah. of things that I know I could build out. Yeah. And uh, and so what I would encourage anyone who's watching this or anyone to do is just is get in, get all the way in. You know, start learning everything you can. Really read up and le read blog posts and follow people that are that are the movers and shakers. And all of a sudden. All this stuff starts to appear. There'll be JV opportunities. Somebody will come up and say, you know, why don't you and I partner up? Because you're good at this and I'm good at this. Why don't we work on this together? And that's happened to me a couple times. And, you know, you can make you can make some great money really fast mm -hmm. when you're you're paying attention, you're working hard, you're going in a direction. Um, there's just so much opportunity out here, and it's it's and it's so exciting to see because people get really jacked when they when they see a, a, a really awesome opportunity and they know they can capitalize on it. It's like yep. all the like for me, all the things came together. Well, I, you yep. know, there's that's happening every day at conferences like this. And I was talking to someone last night, they're like, oh, I met so-and-so and they're really good at this. And I have a list of these people and I think we can cross, yeah. you know, pollinate. Those connections, yeah, yeah, those connections can be extremely powerful and yeah. profitable. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I, I, I think it's a, a great time to be alive, that's for sure. Cool, cool. Well, any, any parting thoughts for someone who's just starting to investigate this stuff, maybe thinking about marketing automation, yeah. not sure, but has heard about it through someone else. I mean, yeah, the, well, in my opinion, You'd be crazy not to get on board. Um, you're, you're going to you're at the, the the forefront of technology in this in this circle. I mean, if you stopped 100 people on the street and said, "Tell me what marketing automation is," they'd look at you deer in the headlights. They they wouldn't have any idea what that means. What is that? Um, but when you do understand the power of it and you do know how to capitalize on it, it changes everything. And I believe that this is this is one of those kind of things that from from this point where it's a starting point. You know, like looking back, you'd say, "Oh well." You know, the, the assembly line for the cars, you know, these days is no big deal, right? It's uh, assembly lines are used all yeah, over for all kinds of... Take it for granted. Right? Yeah, take it for granted. Um, and, and I think we're in that kind of phase right now where this this is going to grow to a point where, you know, it'll be like, oh, well, yeah, it's like the QuickBooks for, for marketing your business. Yeah, Everyone you just uses, use it. Yeah, yeah, you just use it. Everyone has some kind of system that they have to use. And and it starts with the awareness of it. And right now, that's, what, that's where we're at. So the sooner you get on board... It's like uh, the rising tide raises all boats. Yep. That's that's exactly where we are. But if you're not if you're not on the boat, you, yeah. you're, you're missing out. Man. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta get in here and get involved. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, get involved. Come to some conferences. Get, get to Infusion Con. Get around the energy. You know, that's that's probably a, a, another thing I would leave people with. You know, if being an entrepreneur is is a lonely yeah. lonely place. If you're out there on your own, slugging away day after day, trying to make ends meet, try to grow your business. That, that's tough. That, that's a tough place to be, and what you re what's what's really uh, empowering to so many people, and I've heard it over and over again, is they've come to a meeting where 
all us crazy entrepreneurs get together and the energy level goes and your personal energy goes through the roof and you start to feel better and you get that you get that you know yeah. that, ju that juice back again yeah. to go back and hit it again you know, with more energy renewed sense of focus and direction and uh, and that you can't put a dollar value on that that's for me that's what got me over those difficult parts was making sure I was plugged into a system that was bigger than me I got around a group of people that were you know, movers and shakers, big thinkers, mm -hmm. and it always kept me inspired and motivated to go to the next level, the next level, the next level. So, awesome. Yeah. And then just last shameless plug, it's exclusive too. It's not like you take everyone, but yeah. if someone wanted to apply, how would they try to get into you, your mastermind? Uh, they can go to marketingautomationgroup.com um, and you can you can read about uh, you know, what we are, what we're about there, um, and to fill out an application to to, uh, to join us uh, and check it out. We we do offer um, preview tickets for people to come out uh, to just come to one event, mm -hmm. um, see what it's really like for them, whether it's a good fit or not. Um, so that's probably the best way for people to get started, and then we'll always go from there. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Bob. All right, you're welcome, Sean. All right.